Hi everyone, this is Kellyanne with Church Windows. We're going to go ahead and get started with today's Coffee Break Quick Class webinar. Uh, today we're going to look at giving accounts in the donations module, setting them up and using them. Uh, before we dive into that, uh, if it's the first time you've ever used the GoToWebinar program, uh, you should have a toolbar on your screen. You can click on the top of that and drag it to wherever you'd like to place it on your screen. And then if it's blocking what I'm showing you, there should be a little red arrow out to the side of it. If you click on that arrow, it will minimize the GoToWebinar toolbar. And then if you click on it again, uh, it will open it back up. Um, also, let me just double check. I did a quick audio check about 15 minutes ago, but let's make sure. Um, if you can hear me okay, there's a button to raise your hand on your GoToWebinar toolbar. If you would go ahead and just raise your hand, that will alert me that you can hear me okay. Uh, if you cannot hear me, uh, then you can't answer me. Um, unfortunately, I have somebody asking if there is audio. Let me answer them really quickly here. Um, if you are uh, using the phone to hear the audio, it is not a toll-free call, uh, so you might want to choose the uh, speakers option. If you don't have a microphone, that's okay if that's why you're using the phone. Um, chances are I probably will not unmute anyone. Um, there is a question panel on your GoToWebinar toolbar, and you can open that up and type in questions into that uh, question section. And when we get to the end of what I'm going to show you today, I'll go ahead and answer those questions. Um, this is uh, a 15-minute, 15, 15 to 20. Uh, sometimes they've gone a little longer. Uh, but out of respect for people who are here just to learn about giving accounts, and they only have that 15 minutes of time to learn about those, please try to keep your questions topical. Um, I'd love to answer any question you have, but again, some people are just coming to learn about giving accounts. Uh, at the end of class, if I have time, I can stick around and answer some other questions. Um, sometimes questions that pertain to your data, those are best answered on a support call or an email. Um, so um, never meaning to put off any questions and not answer them, but um, we want to stick to the topic, and sometimes it's hard to answer your question without talking to you about your specific data. All right. Uh, one more thing I want to point out, if you have not been to our website, I highly recommend you check out our website at least once a week. Um, we're always adding new things. Uh, the latest tech tips, I believe, just came out last week. Uh, I want to point out on the left side, if you notice here is our Church Windows training. There's all kinds of options here for training. Uh, most of these cost money, uh, but we do have some pre-recorded webinars. Um, some of them are a little older. Uh, they were recorded by Mary Lou, one of our techs who has now moved on and started her own uh, church accounting firm or accounting firm where she, she's very knowledgeable about church windows and is very useful and helpful in helping users that need more help beyond support. Um, also a link to the user group webinars. If somebody else signed you up for it, then you might want to come take a look at all the webinars we're doing this month. I have one later this week, uh, Wednesday the 19th, where it's going to start off as a short coffee break class showing some basics and then people can leave if they need. And then after that, I'll be going on into more detail about designing statements. Um, another thing a lot of people are not aware of is under training, we have a support blog. If you click on that, it has documents and videos, all kinds of free information, helpful tools. Uh, you can even search by keyword or click on the different module names across the top to see the items for those modules. And another newer thing is our online video subscription service. Uh, where you have access to all the videos that we put up here, um, and we're trying to add more as time allows. We're, our, our, most, our biggest concern is making sure we answer support calls. So right now with our higher call volume, uh, we're not able to get as many newer videos up as we like. Uh, but this you can subscribe to. Uh, I think it's $9.95 a month, and you can stop and start as you like and always have access to those videos. Um, and for people who are just now updating to 17, there's a link along the side to version 17 resources. 
um, some what's new, some movies that have to do with 17. And again, as we keep cleaning up the movies, we are recording all of these webinars. And as we get them cleaned up and ready to go, we'll put them up on the site as well. All right, let's go ahead and look at church windows. I went ahead and opened things up just to save some time, but originally I had my opening portal, as we call it. I opened that up. We see the version in the upper right-hand corner, 17.14.1. Uh, if you just updated to 17, you may or may not be aware, uh, SR1, I believe it was released not last Monday, but two weeks ago, I believe. Um, recently. Um, so if yours says point zero, then you want to go ahead and go to our website and get SR1 installed. Um, you want to be on the most current version of the program just because that usually uh, has fixed any bugs we found and it also may have some enhancements and features we've added as well. So I went ahead and clicked on donations, which I already brought that up just to save us time. And again, today's topic is accounts, the giving accounts. Um, if you're new to Church Windows, you have to put your people in. If you want them to have a record over in membership, you add them there, and they show as possible donors in donations just by adding a house and individual record in membership. You can also just add people to donations by going up to givers and add individual or group. Those do not have a record then in membership. Uh, once you've added your people, then you need to add the things that people are giving to, or the giving accounts, donation accounts, whatever you'd like to call them. We can access that by going two different routes. You'll see in the middle of our screen, we have our shortcuts, our picture shortcuts, the things you might use most often. If we click on Manage Accounts, that opens up our giving accounts screen. Or we can access that by going up in the upper left to Accounts and Pledges and then clicking on Manage Accounts. Either route takes you to the same screen. Once we're in here, we can see currently the screen defaults. Let me get my highlighter. I've got dual screens. Get my spotlight. We'll talk about what we see here. If you look, uh, we see a search box in the upper left. All of our giving accounts showing in the box here in the uh, left half of the screen. And lower left, we can see our display options. The program defaults to automatically show us our active accounts rather than any we've marked inactive. Upper right, we have, or the right half of the screen, we have more details about each account. If we've clicked on an account, here the, the Memorial Giving account is highlighted, we can see at the top right the information showing below in this right half of the screen is for the highlighted account or the memorial giving account. And then we have two different tabs, our detail tab. Let's talk about what we see here. Uh, you may have accounts that you don't want to print on a statement. If so, you can uncheck print on statement and any giving to that account is not going to appear in a giving statement. So if you run your giving statements and you see all you're giving on there except giving for one particular account, I recommend come into giving accounts and see, did someone uncheck print on statement? That could be why it's not showing. You also can determine if account an account will be, if giving to that will be tax deductible or not. Um, an account can either be tax deductible or we can uncheck this and that would mean the giving to that is not tax deductible. On the giving statements, it does separate the money and total up a total of what's given to accounts marked tax deductible versus another total for anything there where giving is tax deductible is unchecked um, or it is not tax deductible. Uh, you can also enter comments for an account if you like. You can indicate if that account is a pledgeable account. If you go to set up a new campaign and you go to select a giving account for that campaign and it's not in your list of accounts, then come into giving accounts and see if pledgeable account is unchecked. Um, if you don't want an account to show under the pledge area to be used for pledges, then you can uncheck pledgeable. And if people tend to give a certain uh, frequency for their pledging, you can indicate that frequency here and it will automatically fill that in. You can always change or edit it though. 
Um, because donations has no end of year, everything is really date driven, once you use an account, you cannot delete it. If it has giving to it, uh, you can't delete it, but you can mark it inactive, and that will prevent anyone from using that account. It won't show and enter donations to enter any money towards, but you still retain the history of that. <clears throat> Let's look at the other tab, and then we're going to go ahead and add an account. If we click on accounting links, if you own and use our accounting module, when you enter donations, you can easily transfer that entry right over into accounting uh, with just a few clicks. But first, you do need to, for each of your giving accounts, select the debit account or asset account the money will go to, and then the credit account you want that money to go to. Most often, that is a number four income account, but you'll see below that you can also send money to an expense to offset an expense, or some churches set up pass-through money uh, as a liability. So you could also have that credited to a liability but you need to select the accounts that money will transfer into. Now, you can also go into special functions, link donations, and that's a big chart that shows all of your giving accounts. Um, but if you know where you want that money to transfer when you're setting that account up, you can set it up and establish the linking right here. Now, notice uh, lower left, if I check show inactive and then uncheck show active, we see one account that we have marked inactive, our prepaid pledges building fund account. And lower left, I can check both active and inactive and see all of my accounts. Adding a giving account is very easy. Um, I can use a search box up here if I need to to look for an account. I can just start typing the name or the number. And it's going to narrow down to what I'm typing as I type it. If there's an account I would like to um, delete, I can highlight it and click the minus at the end of the line. Or I can click the delete button down at the bottom. And the program is smart enough to know if the account has giving. And if it does, it will tell you, you cannot delete that account. That would be an instance where I'd want to mark it inactive. <coughs> Excuse me. To add a new account, I just click the plus at the end of the search box brings up a little window where I can enter my account number and name. We'll make this 107 because we want it to come just before our Christmas account. I'm going to call it Thanksgiving Turkeys. I can go ahead and click Add, or if I know I want to add some more details now, I can click the little down arrow, down arrow for Show Detail, and it opens up and shows me what I showed you that was on the right half of my giving account screen. Here I can indicate whether I want to print on statement, if it's tax deductible, if I want it to be a pledgeable account, we'll uncheck that. And I can also establish my accounting links. I want this to go to my Huntington Bank checking. And we'll put this in special holiday giving. Because it's not a pledge account, I'm not going to fill in a prepaid credit account. If an account is a pledge account, you can fill in the prepaid credit, or usually that's a liability account that you'd have it flow to if it's given prior to the year it's fulfilling the pledge. And the program is smart enough to know that it's prepaid and send it to this account, the prepaid credit, rather than the credit account. Once I'm done, I can click, now I don't want to just click finish, I want to click add giving account. And then I can go on and add more if I need to, but if I'm done, then I can click Finish Adding Giving Accounts. And now we see our new Thanksgiving Turkey account. Now, if I look, I can go to Enter Donations real quick. Maybe I'm going to enter yesterday's donations. I'm just going to go right down to Account Pledge. And if we look, we should see, I think it must be added at the bottom. Yes, our new Thanksgiving Turkey account. If I don't like where that account is showing, maybe I'm get, getting ready to enter a whole bunch of money for Thanksgiving turkeys, I can click this little box with three dots, Set Account Order, and that brings up Set Up Account Order, or the Giving Account Order, and this is strictly for the order I'm going to see my accounts in Enter Donations. I can click on that Thanksgiving turkey that's at the bottom and use my arrow, my up arrow just to the right, 
move that all the way to the top of my list and say OK. Now if I go back and look, Oops, it's at the bottom of my list because that's where I left myself. But now we see Thanksgiving turkey is right up at the top. I can go through and quickly enter all my Thanksgiving turkey donations. And then if I like, I can go back and set that order back to general fund at the top. I can also access the set account order by going up to account and pledges and then choosing order accounts. That takes me to the same little window I just showed you in enter donations. So here I'm done with all my Thanksgiving turkeys for this Sunday. Whoops, and I could have done that in Enter Donations, but I did want to show you you can access it in both places. So now if I so, say OK, if I go back into Enter, my general fund is right back at the top. So really easy. Another quick thing I want to show you, I'm showing you a lot, I think, for accounts and pledges or adding accounts. It's pretty easy, though, I think, once you, once you see it a couple times or try it. Um, with your reports, you can set up subtotals for your accounts. So when you add a new account, if you do have subtotals, then after you've added it, I would go up to Accounts and Pledges and Subtotals. And here I can click Show Accounts at the bottom. And here we see, just under total giving, all of our accounts that aren't in subtotals. And I can highlight Thanksgiving turkeys and I can click and drag it right to holiday giving. Or I could also click on an account and over to the right, click the down arrow here and choose which account I'd like, or which subtotal I'd like that in. And now when I look at reports, these accounts and this new Thanksgiving turkey is going to show with my total holiday giving. Now I'm going a little farther than just showing accounts, but let me show you how that looks like on one of my reports. We'll do list account balances, and we better show accounts with zero balance because that Thanksgiving turkey has no balance yet. But if we take a look, I've added my account. I was showed you how we could set that order to move it to the top. And now if we look, we see right here my holiday giving and my Thanksgiving turkey. Uh, accounts within a subtotal are going to show numerically, but I easily move that Thanksgiving turkey new account into my subtotal, total holiday giving. All right, it is, uh, I went a minute over our uh, time, but if you need to leave the class, you can just exit the room and it won't offend me at all. Um, but I'm going to stick around and answer some questions here. I see some came in while I was uh, showing people things. Um, someone had a question and said, never mind, they got it. All right. Um, someone asked, can accounts be added without account numbers? I am quite certain they can. Let me double check though. Let's just try it. I'm pretty sure I can just leave the account name blank and then name my account. Click add giving account, finish with account. So yes, I can add an account without putting an ID or account number. Um, just know then, if you do not use IDs or numbers, things will show alphabetically if you have subtotals. So yes, accounts can be added without numbers. Uh, someone asked, if you change the credit accounting number, will prior giving to that account be changed to the new updated accounting credit number? And what they're asking, and let me show you the big screen for that. If I go to special functions, link to accounting, here is the screen where you can see all of your giving accounts and where that money is transferring to in accounting. Um, what this person is asking is if I go in and change one of these accounts, is it going to affect these batches that have already been posted and transferred to accounting? And the answer is no. Um, those are not retroactive. And also anything, which I don't have anything here, if I click show do not, I don't have anything. But if I had things sitting in that transfer window waiting to be transferred, it would not affect those either. Here I would have to make a temporary change to my credit or debit account and transfer it. Um, but anything new that I post and enter donations, that change to my credit or debit or prepaid credit account will continue forward. Uh, but a change to your linking for transferring will not go retroactively and change prior transfers. You would manually have to correct those. 
Um, someone asked if a giving account has some activity, can it never be deleted even if it's 25 years later? Um, well, Alan, 25 years from now, it's hard to say what the program will look like. It could be possible 25 years from now. However, currently, no. Um, there is no end of year in donations. Uh, the old contributions, there was end of year, and in a new year, you could delete an account. Uh, but in donations, no. Um, once an account has activity, even if you reverse that, that is still a reversal and part of your audit trail. Uh, donations has a much more ironclad audit trail, and you will not be able to delete giving accounts once they have giving. But you can mark them inactive, um, and that will prevent people from using them, but still allow you to have your history and your audit trail, even if it was uh, had had something reversed from it. All right, uh, Kim asks, if people are added into donations rather than membership, can their giving history later be linked to the membership database if they become a member? Uh, currently, no. That, that could be added uh, as a suggestion to programmers. But uh, what Kim is referring to is if you go up to Givers and click Add Individual, and you add somebody here to just donations, or you click Add Group and add a group to donations, the group or individual will not show in your membership module. Uh, adding a giver or a group to donations is specifically so you don't have to take up a record in your membership module. So maybe for people who just come once a year and give at that, that one year time, or a business that maybe just donates at Christmas time, you probably don't want to clutter up your your members and visitor records, adding a household and individual record for those people. Um, so what you'd have to do is transfer the giving to the, the record you create in your membership module, and then you could mark that uh, donations individual or group uh, inactive in the donations module. Uh, it's a little more involved, though, Kim, so if you need to do that, you might want to call in and have, you, uh, have us walk you through that. Uh, and you're welcome, Winnie. She said thank you for the question I answered a little bit ago. Um, someone asked if we don't use the accounting module and do not record pledges, we'll be able to post and function with donations only, not using accounting links. Uh, yes, if you don't use accounting, there's nothing for you to link. Uh, the accounting links only need to be filled in if you use accounting and you choose to transfer over. Um, really, it's your more likely to make mistakes if you go over, if you own a county and you're entering your donations into accounting separately, um, I really advise you use the transfer. It's, you're less likely to have mistakes that way, saves you time. Um, it transfers pretty seamlessly with just a few clicks. So I really encourage people use the transfer to accounting if you use our accounting module to, uh, to move that money over. Um, and you do not have to be a pledging church to use donations. If you don't pledge, then you just don't use the pledge area. Um, you're just going to record and enter your donations to your regular giving accounts. Um, someone asked, will you be giving a webinar on changing from individual givers to gives as family? I don't know if we have a specific webinar that covers that, um, but it's really as, easily, as easy as going to manage givers highlighting each person that wants to give and check gives with family. Uh, if you'd like me to go over that a little slower with you, then give us a call, and any tech could probably help you with that. Um, but I, I don't know what all our webinar topics are, and I don't know if we have a specific one that will just cover that. Uh, someone asked if we enter an account without, without an account number, how is it shown in the accounting module? Uh, well, your accounts... In donations, the only place they show in the accounting module is in your link screen. And when you transfer, um, the only place here I would see my donation accounts would be on this screen, and they're going to show along the left under giving account with no account number. Um, let's see. Oops, let me maximize my screen. Yeah, here at the bottom, we see any account. Uh, so if you have some with numbers, those would be sorted first, and then we see my any account with no account number at the bottom of that list. Um, then the other place you would see them is in the transactions transfer donations. And I don't have any here, but here they would show as regular giving accounts just without a number. All right, 
someone else asked, uh, we don't have the accounting module, but I would like to link church windows account numbers to the actual six-digit accounting number. Will the links be grayed out? If you don't own accounting, then I'm not really clear on what you're going to be linking. I don't think, uh, if you don't own accounting, I don't think you even have access to the link screen. So Joyce, I think you really need to call in and talk to us about that. Um, she asked, the link to the six-digit accounting number, will the links be grayed out? Um, yeah, Joyce, I'm, I'm a little confused about that question, so if you could call and ask a tech familiar with accounting and donations to help you out, we can answer that better. Um, and I have accounting on this, so there's no way for me to really test it here for you. All right. Are there any more questions on giving accounts, adding giving accounts, and using the giving accounts? Um, when you go to set up a pledge, whoops, I do want to, I do want to close that. If I go to pledges and I'm setting up a pledge, I'm just going to go ahead and choose one that I already have. Um, you'll see under account, all of your giving accounts are there. You don't have to set up separate accounts for people who give versus people who pledge. Uh, you should use the same account for giving versus pledging, and that way you can report on that account and see what people just gave to this account versus what people pledged to that account. If you choose an account for a pledge account, I'm not going to change it, um, and a person has a pledge to that account, the program will recognize that, and then when you go to enter their pledges, you'll choose the account that shows their pledge date range. <clears throat> Any more questions on giving accounts, adding them, and using them, and anything like that? Okay, uh, Joyce asked, since we don't have the accounting number, could I change the three-digit church windows account number to our new six-digit number? Um, if you mean in manage accounts, I'm pretty sure you can have more than six numbers. So yes, you could change that. You could have six-digit numbers. Um, I can also edit my account numbers. Whoops. Just do a random number. Uh, by just clicking on the ID and changing that number, let's now pop that down middle of the list. So your account numbers could be six-digit long. Uh, someone asked, can you show where you moved an account into a subtotal again? Sure, I went up to accounts and pledges in the upper left and then clicked on subtotals. On the subtotal screen, notice at first, all I see are my subtotals. To see accounts, I need to click show accounts because I could move an, a subtotal out so it's standalone or I can move a subtotal into a subtotal. I think I can have up to five levels. So you can see how easily I can move things around here, just my subtotals. If all you want to do is work with moving subtotals around, then I wouldn't click Show Account. But if you want to see your accounts, uh, we need to click on Show Accounts. And now if I have all my subtotals closed, anything showing directly uh, under your first or main uh, subtotal, and that would be of all of your accounts, uh, comes called Total Giving Accounts, but you could rename it. Uh, anything showing under there is not in a subtotal, so I can highlight and click and drag it, or I can highlight and over to the right, choose where I want that, and click move account. All right, any other questions? <clears throat> I think I've covered anything, any possibilities for adding accounts and editing accounts. Um, I didn't show you editing, I showed you, you can edit a number, I can edit the name, by just clicking on the name and and typing uh, the change to that name right right under the account name column. So pretty easy. All right, I think I got everyone's questions. Uh, typically on longer classes we have a helper and they answer them. Uh, they type the answers as I'm teaching. So I'm trying to make sure if I missed your question, please, please, please cut and paste it and send it to me again. I should have probably hit the little delete button after I answered each question, but I think I got everyone as I was looking through. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end the class. So if you do have a question, I'd go ahead and hit enter 
So part of your question comes through and I know you're still typing. Um, and I don't end the class while you're in the middle of trying to type your question. All right, and you're welcome. I've seen some thank yous coming through. You're very welcome, folks. I hope uh, the user groups have been helpful. Uh, if you have suggestions for user groups, please email those to support at churchwindows.com. Uh, you can always email or call us with questions. Uh, also suggestions as well. Uh, the program is what it is today, and it is we move into 17 as a result of, well, partially programming changes from Microsoft. We have to move into the new SQL language with all of our modules. Uh, but a lot of the features you see are because of suggestions from uh, users. We're not trying to make it more complicated, uh, but we want to try and implement as many suggestions as all of our users suggest. So um, I think it, it's just a little overwhelming if you're new to donations because it, there's so much you can do. But I hope once you get used to it, you'll see it's, it's a lot better. It's so much more flexible, especially the reporting and what you can do with things. Um, but yeah, if you have questions, please give us a call. Call early. Uh, call volume started picking up a month ago, um, and we're not used to call volume picking up until January. So I apologize in advance if it takes a while to get back to you. Please be patient with us. Uh, we're trying to answer your calls as quickly as possible. And call when you have a question. Don't, don't wait until you have a page-long sheet of questions, because then that takes <clears throat> longer for us to help you answer all those questions. And that causes all of our calls to build up and for it to take sometimes two, three hours to get back with people. So if you have one question, call us. Call us, call us, call us. We'll answer it. Um, but I expect this high call volume is going to continue all the way through January. So apologies in advance for it taking us a little longer than normal to get back to you. But we are a small company. We're not some big company where you get some huge call center, you know, where you don't know who you're talking to. Um, a lot of you, if you've been with us for a long time, you know us by name. So, all right, I'm not seeing any more questions come in. I've kind of rambled on there, hoping, you know, any more questions would come in while I kept talking. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end the class then, or the user group. Uh, thanks so much for attending. Uh, if somebody else signed you up, take a look at the user group webinars to see what's scheduled for the rest of this month. Um, Thanksgiving's coming up, so if I don't talk to you, this week or next week. Have a happy Thanksgiving holiday. Hope you're staying warm where you're at. We got uh, quite a bit of snow today. I wasn't ready for that today. Um, stay warm and have a great day and thanks again for attending. Talk to you on the phone, I'm sure. Bye.